Today in Kansas City, the Division II football champion will be crowned. And finally, after almost three decades of trying, storied head coach Monty Cater has his Shepherd Rams in the title game. But Sporting Park will be a hostile environment. Just over an hour from home, the four-time national champion Northwest Missouri Bearcats are here with around 17,000 of their friends. The D2 National Championship is next. Welcome to the NCAA Division II Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. From a full house sporting park in Kansas City, Kansas, it's the 13-0 Shepherd University Rams from Shepherdstown, West Virginia, and the 14-0 Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State from Maryville, Missouri, located just 90 miles north of here. Last week, Northwest Missouri won its third straight playoff game over West Georgia, and Shepard overcame the loss of their starting quarterback to hold off perennial power, Grand Valley State. Hi again, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Alongside my partner, John Congemi, I play Mathic. We welcome you to Kansas City, Kansas, or should I say Maryville South? <laughs> That's what it feels like here today for this game. It's an interesting dynamic. Shepard is here for the first time. Meanwhile, it's the ninth national title game appearance for Northwest Missouri, and it's a de facto home game for them. What a great atmosphere, Clay. National championship on the line. You have Northwest Missouri with so much confidence and so much experience. You mentioned the nine times in this game four times they come away victorious and for Shepherd University their first appearance underneath the spotlight but 13 wins can they get to 14 two undefeated teams this should be a great setting for a great football game what a year it was again for Northwest Missouri 14 and 0 they ran through the MIAA and earned the number one seed in the division two playoffs their offense is multi-dimensional in its attack averaging 42 points per game the defense at times really stole the show for the year, ranking number one in several categories, including total defense. But let's make no mistake, John, the quarterback, Brady Bowles, is the undisputed leader. If they win today, he's going to have a big Santa. He really is. He's a senior. He has all the experience you need in big games. He played in that 2013 National Championship victory. He's having a sensational season. 29 touchdowns, over 3,700 yards through the air. He's the guy that makes this high-tempo offense go, and he's the guy that will be key to victory for the Bearcats. Shepherdstown, West Virginia, very proud of the Rams. They've already had the best season in program history, 13-0, and and they've won games on average by three touchdowns. Quarterback play has been dynamic for them as well and accurate, especially from junior captain Jeff Ziemba. Their defense has also been stifling. They rank 11th in Division II in scoring defense. But back to the quarterback situation. Shepard got a scare last week. They lost Jeff Ziemba to a shoulder injury on the opening series. Fortunately for the Rams, backup Connor Jessup came in and played very well. Who gets the start today has been a question all week. And for the latest, here's Olivia Harlan. Play. Jeff Ziemba is clear to play, but it was such a game time decision that offensive coordinator Ernie McCook told me he'd give me a thumbs up right before we went on air. Now, backup Connor Jessup did get all the first team snaps this week, but coaches aren't worried that Jeff physically didn't take any snaps because he's so veteran in their offense. Now, they do like his range of motion today, but say there's still some discomfort in his follow through. I watched him warm up today, and he didn't attempt a pass over 25 yards. It would have crushed him not to play, though, in his team's first title game appearance after starting for two years, guys. But it is asking a lot of that shoulder. Like you said, they rely on his accuracy. Just four interceptions all season on over 3,000 passing yards, guys. Something to keep an eye on as this game plays out. It was going to be tough keeping him out here today. Great atmosphere in Kansas City. The D2 title game is next. The CAA Division II Football Championship is presented by Western Mutual, proud to be an official planning partner of the NCAA, and in part by Head & Shoulders. Live head first. Partisan crowd for this Division II national title game in Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City is Northwest Missouri's largest alumni base. They've got about 10,000 former students who now live in the Kansas City area. I don't know, I think most of them might be here today. Shepard won the toss, and they want the football right away. So we'll see Ziemba 
go to work. Truen has it in the air. Ben Truen kicks off. Keon Robinson fields the short kick for Shepard. Comes to the center of the field. Good coverage by the Bearcats. He is driven down near the 17-18 yard line. Let's go back to last week. Jeff Ziemba suffering an AC sprain in his right shoulder in the game against Grand Valley State. Here it comes. He is their heart and soul. It was a tough week. It was a painful week for Jeff. We said it before, it was going to be hard to keep the junior captain out of this game. And there's no doubt he's the leader of this football team. He was selected a team captain in his junior season. Very accurate passer, over 60%, sees the entire field. But it will be crucial for him to play well early, to show his coaching staff, and more importantly, his team, that he's healthy enough to lead them in this national championship. High snap. Ziemba scrambles. Turnover. Northwest Missouri's got it. Inside the five-yard line. This crowd already getting to the Rams. The last thing the Shepherd Rams needed was a turnover on their opening possession. And that's exactly what happened. A very high snap. Jacob Kingston, normally a reliable guy in shotgun at center, well over the head of Ziemba, never really got a hold of the football. And then I believe that AC joint may have prevented him from getting on the football. I think he was very cautious inside the five-yard line getting on that football. Cass Weidel recovers for Northwest Missouri. The junior rush end out of Carroll, Iowa. And the Bearcats given a gift as Brady Bowles brings the offense out of the field for the first time. The dual threat senior starts out of the gun. He'll hand off to Phil Jackson, who takes it wide. Reaches out toward the pylon, and he did not get in. They're going to mark him at the one, the big veteran power back as the Bearcats right on the doorstep. And it looked like they had a really good push off that left side. That's the strength of this offensive line where Smith is, Kemp, Sherman, the center. They like to get that push off the left side. I wouldn't doubt if they're going to run it again, they try that left side. Wilcox and Grove in there now in the backfield for the Bearcats. It will be Jordan Grove stumbles, but then walks in after he recovers. His 10th total touchdown on the year, and what a start for Northwest Missouri. Well, that'll get this crowd, pro Bearcats, into this football game, and the Shepherd Rams are going to have to find a way to respond. Simon Matisse in the junior place kicker from Denmark. The MIAA Special Teams Player of the Year comes on for the extra point. Seven nothing here at Sporting Park in Kansas City, Kansas. A turnover leads to points. And Clay, just a high snap on the opening play for the Rams offensively. Jacob Kingston, the reliable center, the junior, snaps it well over the head of Jeff Ziemba. He gets a hand on it, but that leads to a fumble recovery and a score, an easy walk-in touchdown by Jordan Grove, his third of the season. And they capitalize with excellent field position to the Bearcats offensively, and they get that quick score they were looking for. There's Jake Kingston. He is an amazing story for Shepard. The center has played through a torn ACL, which he suffered in week three, and a broken bone in his hand. His snapping hand, as it happened, suffered a month ago. Both of those injuries, John, are going to require surgery after the season. you got to wonder if perhaps that played a part in that high snap. And you already alluded to the fact that Ziemba's shoulder injury probably kept him from diving on that football. I think the combination of both of those injuries played a major role. You get out in your opening series, you're, you're a little excited. And I think that Kingston just had a little adrenaline going, snapped it well over the head of his ju junior quarterback. But that led to seven points right away. Now they're going to have to find a way 
to respond, stay on the football field, and start moving the chains early in this game. Deeper kick this time for Ben True and Keon Robinson. His return gets across the 15 and well covered again. The Bearcats drop him at the 17 yard line. Clay, one of the biggest things for the Rams offensively that offensive coordinator Ernie McCook told us, he said they have to win that turnover battle. They have to be able to protect the football. Well, in that opening set of downs, the first play, you give it up inside the five-yard line. Now let's see Jeff Ziemba come back in for the second series, protect the football, and try to stay on the field. Ziemba, play fake, wants to throw, rolling out. Takes a shot downfield, finds Billy Brown, and he makes the catch. He is the guy they want the ball to get to. The program's all-time leader in receiving yards with a catch of 37. Play, that's how you respond when you're a championship football team in a big game. In a championship game, you go to your playmaker right away. And Billy Brown at 6'4 did an excellent job of stopping that big body, locating the football and make it a big catch. So the Rams in Northwest Missouri territory for the first time. First and 10 from the 46. Ziemba throws it out into the flat to cross. He tries to hurdle a tackler and lands awkwardly at the 41 yard line. Alan Cross the 5'7", 196 pound senior, very acrobatic. And Marcus Jones was the guy that was bearing down on him and Cross. It's a good thing he didn't come up injured on that play. That's true, and he took a little bit of a beating last week against Grand Valley State, so you hope that he's okay to be able to carry the load at 5'7", 196. Not a big guy in stature. And a penalty marker. It's gonna be a full start against Shepard. Referee today, Edwin Lee. Offense, number 74. Five yard penalty. First half. It's a South Atlanta Conference down. officiating crew today, and Shepard is one of the most penalized teams in Division II. 102 yards of penalties per game against Shepard. They average 10 penalties a game. Monty Cater said. You know, in certain terms this week, if we commit too many penalties, if we hurt ourselves against this team, we're done. Well, it's a wonder that, you know, you get an undefeated team that have made so many mistakes throughout the season in penalties to overcome that. Right. It is a credit to them being here today. Market back five yards and a second down and ten. It'll be cross again. Looking for room over that right side. He'll get across the 45 to the 44-yard line. Brock Sherman, the weak side linebacker, makes the tackle and the keys to the game when Shepard has it. Well, here's one of those plays. Be better on third down. Shepard's been great for the season on third down, close to 50%, but today they have to be closer to 55 or 60 to keep that offense on the field. And defensively for the Bearcats, they want to be able to pressure the line of scrimmage. They have a terrific front seven that's big and fast and can run in the eight. That pressure creates turnovers with interceptions in the back end. They need the 36-yard line. Ziemba throws to the sideline. Has a man down there, Dalton Boyd, but he overshot the transfer from William and Mary. Marcus Jones shadowing him in the coverage. It's fourth down. Terrific, terrific job down the field by the Bearcats defensively. Secondary running stride for stride with those Rams wide receivers. Ruan Venter, the true freshman punter, comes on for the Rams. He had a punt block last week. Northwest has blocked nine kicks this year. Sean Bain Jr., conference freshman of the year in the MIAA, is back to return. Low snap. Venter is able to get it off. Fair catch called for, but Bain is going to let it bounce behind him into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. The Bearcats will start at their own 20 when we come back. They've got a 7-0 lead early here in KC. A lot of green in this building today. 
And these Northwest fans already excited to see the Bearcats up 7-0. And let's take a look at how Northwest coach Adam Doral plans for success brought to us by Northwestern Mutual. I meant what I said to you all week. Get out of that tunnel, hear that cr uh, crowd roar, soak that in, smell the roses, get over there, get a cup of Gatorade, and let's get going. The team that gets settled into the environment quickest is going to have a chance to get on the scoreboard. If we can do that, it's going to be like throwing gasoline on fire. Okay? Adams, a former Bearcats All-American lineman. Three conference titles, five playoff appearances, and a national championship since becoming head coach. He grew up in Maryville. Became an All-American there and a three-year captain. And now is the coach, and he couldn't be prouder this program he's got his dream job his quarterback Brady Bowles throws it out to Dre Washington on the screen and he'll get across the 25 to the 28 yard line Brady Bowles senior from Lincoln Nebraska this is his 10th career playoff game for the Bearcats this guy is a winner. He is. He's 8-1 and one in those playoff games. He does a terrific job of not only protecting the football but keeping this tempo going offensively he gets the ball gets it makes good decisions on the perimeter and he keeps that offense on the field it really wears down opposing defenses voted team captain for the second straight year he'll hand off to Phil Jackson he's got the first down and more he is tough to bring down it's been a career year for the junior from Carroll Stream Illinois 14 total touchdowns this year for number 28 and I was talking with him yesterday John he is so excited that his dad Phil is here who he was named after and his brother Justin who's the starting running back for the Northwestern Wildcats he, he's a load to bring down especially in between the tackles and that time he's able to get outside for some positive yardage and penalty marker down and there's an injury timeout for injured player before the snap. Come out for injured player before the snap. Isaiah Ross, the senior defensive tackle for the Rams, is being attended to. While they look at him, will step aside. 7 0 Bearcats here in Kansas City. Seven nothing Northwest Missouri State leading Shepard here in the Division II championship game from Kansas City, Kansas. A turnover on the first snap of the game for Shepard led to Northwest taking the lead. They've been playing football in Maryville since 1908. 20th appearance in the Division II playoffs. This is the ninth title game appearance. And they've won four championships, most recently in 2013. And we talked about it before. Kansas City has... Their largest alumni base. This became a sellout almost immediately after the Bearcats won last week. They've got a first down at 10 at their own 36-yard line. Phil Jackson finds some wiggle room across the 40 to the 43-yard line. And that's a pickup of seven yards. Good run on first down. And, John, this is a no-huddle offense. A lot of pre-snap motion. Personnel changes in almost every down. It relies on tempo, and it's set by their quarterback, Brady Bowles. He's able to get guys lined up, show you multiple formations, multiple motions, but they want to run plays in a hurry. Bowles steps away from trouble and makes something out of nothing. In fact, he's got a first down. Last week, he passed for 235, also ran for 53 in a touchdown. He is a true dual threat. And the last time that the Bearcats won a championship, they relied on Brady Bowles to come off the bench to run the football. He was primarily the running quarterback, so don't fall asleep when things are covered down the field. Bowles can tuck it under his right arm and make some positive yardage. And Trevor Adams was the passing QB. Brady was the running QB, and it won him a title. He'll hand off here. This is Cameron Wilcox. He'll get it across the midfield line. Ball came loose. But uh, the officials are going to mark him down. And at the 48-yard line, it appears. And now some confusion. Here's Edwin Lee again. Rolling on the field is a fumble and recovered by Shepard. It was ruled a fumble. 
Keon Robinson recovered the football for Shepard. And now it's going to be looked at again to see if Wilcox was down. Well, there was one big turnover that led to six points already in this football game. Let's take a look. I think that ball may have been coming out before Cameron Wilcox hit the ground. I'm not sure if his hip hits the ground. It looks like that ball was yeah. sliding out of the grasp of Wilcox. We had one official rule him down. The other official came over and overruled him and it was ruled a fumble on the field by Cameron Wilcox. James King knocked it out of a fumble is under further review. I think Cameron Wilcox his lower body lands on the defender on a Rams defender. I don't think it ever hits the ground as that ball starts to turn. He lands on the arm of the would be tackler it looked like up front in James King. Watch his left side. It's going to land on King and never hit the ground as that ball starts to turn. This is a great look at it here, Clay. It looks like his body, his lower half, lands on King, the tackler, right there. Boy, that's close. Shepard has already had a turnover in this game that led to points. And now the Rams are hoping to get a takeaway here. There's number 96, James King, who knocked that ball loose. And Keon Robinson, he's the guy that fell on the football for the Rams defensively. And that's what they needed. They needed to sh shorten this field, cut the field in half for their offense to try to get back and, and tie this football game up early in this first quarter. You said it before, Shepard said they have to win the turnover battle today. It's a must. And yet it's almost like the coaching staff wanted, they needed to play a perfect game the to win this. The rolling of the play stands. First down, Shepard. So a break for the Rams. And they've got good field position as they're going to take over at their own 47 yard line. They get the right coverage. They may try to get to Billy Brown in a hurry on this set of downs. They look for 81 right there. The pass is underthrown. And keep in mind, Jeff Ziemba is still recovering from that shoulder injury last week. There was not a lot of pep on that football. No, and that was to the short side of the field as well, Clay. So that's the easier throw for Jeff to make the read and get it out quickly. I think he's going to probably play it to, to his strengths, and that means not maybe stretching from hash to the far sideline with a lot of throws. The Mountain East Offensive Player of the Year. He's one of eight finalists for the Harlan Hill Award, the Division II Heisman which was won by Ferris State quarterback Jason Vanderlaan for the second straight year last night. High snap again. Ziemba is able to corral it. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage and he's frustrated. Third down. Brandon Yost, the defensive tackle, gets in there for the stop. And this is an offense that is struggling right now. He's frustrated, but he has to have a little bit more urgency on to be able to get the football to his running back. That was a heck of an athletic play by Jeff to catch the football. And, and you could tell he was having words with Kingston right yep. after that second down snap. Yeah, that battery is having issues. Kingston and Ziemba. Remember, we talked about that right hand. Broken bone hasn't, hasn't healed and will not heal till after the season. Third and 11, Ziemba in trouble and he's dumped at the 40. Brock Sherman comes in for a loss of six. So Shepard gets a break, but that dynamic defense of Northwest Missouri won't give in an inch. It's a three and out. Clay, we mentioned the pressure they can apply at the line of scrimmage. This time, it comes from everywhere. It comes from the outside in the presence of Brock Sherman, number two on the spot 
for the Bearcats defensively. Brock Sherman has a brother Chase who's the starting center on this team. Sean Bain calls for the fair catch at the 15 yard line and Northwest will get it back. The number one defense in the country showing it. Brock Sherman gets to the quarterback second sack on the season for him. Phil Jackson with the carry on first down, a gain of five. We apologize. We're back as Northwest Missouri goes right to work here. They turn it over, but the defense forces a three and out for Shepard. Bearcats leading 7 0 here with just over seven minutes to go in the first quarter. It's Jackson again. He's loose. 30 near the 40 yard line before he's run out. Adam Coles, the cornerback, made the tackle, but it's a run of 20 yards for Jackson. Well, wow, let's credit Dylan Morris, the right guard. He comes in and gets a terrific block. And Shane Smith off that left side, the tackle as well, propelled Jackson down the sidelines. It's been that left side of the offensive line for the Bearcats. That's where they're doing the most damage on the ground. And they've got a lot of veterans over there. On that offensive front, here is Bowles throwing a strike to the 44-yard line, caught by Bain. That's a guy they want to get loose. He picks up five on that catch. He is the fastest player on the team, John. Around 80 catches on the year, over 1,000 yards receiving. And you talk to the coaching staff, they'll say there is nobody defensively that has shown the ability to stop him consistently. There is no doubt he is the favorite target of Brady Bowles just by the sheer numbers and that's because of his speed and reliable hands on the outside. Second down at five for Northwest. This is Wilcox and he's got a first down. He is the shifty speeding running back of that Jackson Wilcox duo. He's going to get between eight and ten touches today they hope the three Bearcats running backs Jackson Wilcox and Emmanuel Jones we haven't seen yet all hail from the Chicago land area and that's the thing about Adam Doral when he took over for Mel Churchma he has expanded the recruiting base and he's done especially well in places like Chicago he really has and he wanted to change that day one and he do, he's done a great job of finding players around the country it's Jackson again bouncing to the outside and he'll get to the 45-yard line, a pickup of four for Jackson. There's James Gupton, the middle linebacker for Shepard, making the stop. He is the best defensive player for the Rams. Second game back after missing a month with a hamstring injury. And even though Shepard didn't lose while Gupton was out, they certainly missed him. Well, you mentioned he's the guy that runs and hits, and he's a difference maker for that Rams defense. Bowles picks up the low snap through a slant route to Randy Schmidt. And he dropped it. So what are the keys when Northwest has? Well, we've seen a little bit of this so far early in this game. It's tempo. Offensive coordinator Charlie Floor wants his offense to stay on the field and go as fast as possible. It really makes opposing defenses vanilla in their coverage and they try to wear them out. And Shepard defensively, they have to weather the storm. They've weathered it so far with an early turnover. Now this defense has to keep the Bearcats out of the end zone. And they need a stop right here is what they need. Bowles, Cox fires, through it low, incomplete to Shane Williams. And so the defense does its job. As they force Northwest to bring on the punter. And the punting situation for the Bearcats has been in flux a little bit. Randy, Th uh, excuse me, Matt Thorman was the primary punter, but did not punt last week. Randy Schmidt has become the primary punter here in the postseason. And this will be their first punt of the day. And the fair catch called for by Keon Robinson. And this could be a long field for the Rams. They'll take over at the 13 when we come back to Kansas City. Back here at Sporting Park in Kansas City, 7-0 Northwest Missouri State leading Shepard in this Division II title game. 
Jeff Siemba has appeared limited with that right shoulder. For more, let's go down to Olivia. Yeah, Clay, well, a turnover and two sacks understandably seem to be frustrating him. He's not really talking to anyone on the sideline, just on his headset. But he is shaking his right arm out, pacing the sideline. So that's something to watch. It could really be bothering him. AC sprain, right shoulder suffered last week. Well, he went through the rehab, John, but you're a former quarterback. Uh, you've suffered injuries to your throwing shoulder before. This is a tough situation, especially a national title game. It's not fun in the... On the biggest stage, there's another bobbled snap out of shotgun. So that's the third time that he's had to face it, and it's all to the right side where that injury is. He's stretching that right AC joint, and he's lucky to get on this football. I mean, it's oh. there's just no chance. Jacob Kingston, the center, must correct it or, or get the quarterback, Jeff Ziemba, under center. And now a timeout called by the Rams. And they need to work through some things. There's no doubt about it. We and we've documented how Kingston has a broken bone in that heavily right hand, you know, taped right hand is giving him trouble. We've seen a few bad snaps from the junior from Pasadena, Maryland. One led to that early turnover in Northwest Missouri points. There is the second one that you're able to have an athletic quarterback be able to grab and you could see the frustration between Zamba and Kingston. Okay, you've got two injured players there. At some point, does Ernie McCook, the offensive coordinator, put Zamba under center? I don't know if they have that even in their offense, you know, to be able to run everything that they do from under center. That's the trouble. They come back here with a more conventional set, Clay, and to your answer, it looks like Jeff may be going under center here on second down. Let's we'll see if this fixes it. Second and ten. Deep handoff, Allen Cross. He'll plunge ahead for a handful. Cass Weidel, who recovered that Fumble here earlier in the quarter makes the tackle. This is a veteran defense for Northwest Missouri State. Eight guys on the defensive two deep played in the 2013 title game. They'll try to get off the field here on third down. The Rams 0 for 2 on third down so far today. Five-step drop to the outside. It is caught first down, Billy Brown. First team All-Mountain East. He is their go-to guy in ticklish situations. They desperately needed to move the chains, and they go to Brown. And he's their big play receiver on the outside. That's a good throw to the short side of the field, and I think that's where Ziemba is limited to. I'm not so sure he can stretch the field. So for the Rams' offense to be successful, you're going to see their big play wide receiver possibly line up more times on the short side of the field. Ziemba will give it to Cross again. And he's good for a couple of that time. Billy Brown, nine catches for 132 yards and two touchdowns last week. His eighth 100-yard receiving game this season. So many times he has been game plan for that other receivers have been able to step up because the focus has been on Brown and they want to move him around more in the slot both sides of the field to try to open up some of the other wide receivers away from center again Ziemba hands off to cross tries to take it over the left side and Jacob Volstead steps up he's going to be around the ball all day for Northwest Missouri 110 tackles this season coming into the game, 11 sacks. If there's a guy that's the heart and soul of the defense, it's Jacob Volstead. Physical football player, and he's a typical linebacker. He's going to come downhill and make plays, and right now they're looking to make a play on third down. Third down and three coming up. If you're the Rams offensively, this is where you have to win 
You have to be able to convert on third down. Ziemba again away from center. Wants to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. Steps up and dives for the first down to the 43-yard line. A very gutty play by Jeff Ziemba. When you look at him play, he has great pocket awareness. He knew that his clock was running out, and he had to make a play with his, la with his legs. Keeping plays alive will be a key today for Jeff Ziemba. And he dives on that left shoulder, not the right shoulder. Smart. First down and 10 for Shepard. It's Cross. Another decent run on first down, right into the arms of Volstead, who makes another tackle. He'll get four, maybe five on that carry. You know, we talk about the importance, Clay, of third down, but it's first and second down. You know, they have to be able to win at the line of scrimmage against a a very, very talented defensive front seven. If they can, they take a little pressure off of the passing game of Jeff Ziemba. This has been an impressive drive for Shepard. Approaching midfield now. They started at their own 13. Hit for a loss. Alan Cross and Brandon Yost, the very rugged senior defensive lineman, first team all-conference for the third straight year, makes the hit behind the line of scrimmage. He's so strong at the point of attack and uses those hands to be able to get away from would-be blockers and find ball carriers. He's done it all season. That's the eighth tackle behind the line of scrimmage, eight and a half tackles behind the line of scrimmage now. Makes it a third down and six. The Rams have converted twice on this series so far. Ninth play of the drive. Ziemba flushed. Looking downfield. He's going to come to the middle of the field and cross. Makes the catch. First down Rams. A 10-yard pickup as Jeff Ziemba makes another beautiful play here. Well, there was a bust up front because it should have been a sack by Weidel for the Bearcats at the point of attack, but Ziemba uses his eyes, his vision, to find Alan Cross with the big-time catch to stay on the field and continue this drive. Well, it was a poor start for that guy and his offensive unit. On the very first snap, it goes over his head. Leads to a Northwest Missouri State touchdown, but the Rams have pulled it together, and after one, it's just a seven-point game. Let's go back to last week. Shepard hosting Grand Valley State in last week's national semifinal. Capacity crowd for the Rams. Connor Jessup. The backup quarterback coming in for the injured Jeff Ziemba throwing a touchdown pass. C.J. Davis and that secondary were terrific. A pick six came down to that final play as Grand Valley State tried to tie it on a two-point conversion. The Rams hold on and get to the national championship game. Jessup, 15 for 20, 173. A couple of touchdowns. The most important thing, didn't turn it over. Not a bad job out of the bullpen. No, he did an awesome job. You're only one play away when you're the backup quarterback, so you always have to be prepared. And Connor was that. Ziemba starting this game. They've moved him under center. He'll throw here. Billy Brown makes the catch on first down. He's going to get six, maybe seven. And Ziemba is, took a big shot there at the end of that play. We just showed Connor Jessup on the sidelines. No matter what, he has to be ready because that AC joint I know is sore. He took a shot on the left side, but you land on the right side, and you can tell that one hurt. You know, the coaching staff told us all week Ziemba gives them their best chance to win. Of course, if he's not healthy, if he's not feeling his best, maybe they do have to look to Jessup. Cross. And he'll get a hard-earned yard. It's going to bring up third down and two. Let's go down to Olivia. Clay, like you said, Connor Jessup has to be ready the whole game. But just now I'm starting to see him really start throwing and practicing with the receiver. It looks like he's anticipating to go in sooner than later. A transfer from Virginia Tech. 
Had only eight pass attempts prior to last week. They're three for three on third down on this drive. Can they do it again? Ziemba, quick drop, looking to throw, in trouble, and he is going to be dumped. Colin Bevins, the Iowa State transfer, and second team All-American with the big sack. He has been doing that all year. Make it 12 and a half sacks for Bevins. As he comes in, he eludes the block of the running back, Allen Cross, and finds quarterback Ziemba deep in the backfield. Just a relentless pass rusher off the edge for Northwest Missouri State. And third down defense for the Bearcats leading the nation. Opponents converting at just 24%. Third punt already for Venter. And he's going to pin Northwest deep. They're going to mark it at the three-yard line. Colin Bevins, co-defensive player of the year in the MIAA. It's 7-0 Northwest. Full season continues tonight on ESPN at 9 with Arkansas State and Louisiana Tech in the Arnell Carriers New Orleans Bowl. You can also watch it live on Watch ESPN. Arkansas State, a very explosive offense. 492 points this year, a Sun Belt record. Seeking their ninth consecutive victory Saturday in facing Louisiana Tech. Monty Cater has. And the head coach at Shepard for 29 years, a class act, one of the most respected men in Division II football. 15 conference titles, 11 playoff appearances. Took the program from the NI, NAIA ranks to Division II. Only three active NCAA coaches have more career wins than him. But he's never had a chance to play for a national title. Today's the first time. And he told us on our call this week, if you're going to win championships, you better do it with defense. And that defense has a chance now with the Bearcats pinned inside the 10-yard line to make a play and tie this football game up. And they actually marked it at the 6-yard line after that 33-yard punt. Worst starting field position for the Bearcats. They get it to Bain. And he uh, picks up 7 yards. They could throw it to him just about every play, and their offense would probably be just fine. It looks pretty easy when those two guys hook up in terms of Bowles and Bain. Two great playmakers with experience at the quarterback spot, and then a redshirt freshman with speed on the outside. Comes up second down and three. Bowles has over 3,500 yards passing this year, and he wants to throw again. Sets now in trouble. Ball pops out. Bowles is able to dive back on it and recover. Near disaster for the Bearcats as Chanel Jenkins knocked it out of Bowles' hands. And that's what the big defensive end does. He wreaks havoc in the backfield. Well, he had a big sack last week, and you can see seven and nine back there. Nine is Jenkins, seven is Norris around the football, making life miserable for Brady Bowles. That was almost the turnover that Monty Cater and that defense was looking for. Some field Jenkins has an outside chance to make an NFL roster. He's a senior out of District Heights, Maryland. And a penalty marker down. And this could be a full start. It looked like Dylan Morris. Clay was the guy that had movement up front. Offense with 75. After this to the goal line. Third down. Well, after going five straight quarters without a penalty, Northwest Missouri commits its first of this game. And they didn't have any penalties last week. That's, that's a good way to win playoff football games. Don't hurt yourself. Well, you right now, I would believe head coach Adam Doral, he wants his veteran quarterback to protect the football. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a quarterback draw or something like that because there was a big play made last week by C.J. Davis with an interception here. Jackson hit, dropped at the three. Octavius Thomas, a weak side linebacker. We talked to him yesterday about how big this is for the Shepherd program, the school, the community. He was all smiles, couldn't stop 
talking about the Rams and especially his defensive brothers, and he makes a big play there to force the Bearcats to punt from their own end zone. Two negative plays in that one by Thomas in the backfield. First three and out for Northwest. And this is returnable for Keon Robinson, slips a tackle, but can't get out of another one at the 40. Still very good field possession for Shepard when we come back. Shepard ready to take over and at the 39 yard line of the Bearcats down a touchdown. Monty Cater said he was more excited for his players than himself after getting to a national title game for the first time in his 29 years as head coach. He said many of my guys have never even been on a plane before but not only is that program and the school excited that entire town is eating this up. You know you can tell just by his demeanor how, how special this moment is and how much it would mean not only to the university but to Monty himself to win this football game. Again under center Ziemba gives it to Lolly Jabri Lolly a good run on first down inside the 35 to the 33. He is a big Physical running back second in scoring in the Mountain East Conference 14 touchdowns and the Shepherd offense is showing signs of getting unhinged here Well, they bring that bruiser in on first down with good field position and that's Lolly the bigger back Alan cross goes at 5 7 Lolly at 6 foot 220 pounds So he can go north and south this might be a play action, setting up a little bit of play action to get it down to Billy Brown, their playmaker. It's Lolly again, looking for room on the left side. He's going to be stopped at the 31 by Volstead and Cole Forney. You'll even see Lolly step into that Wildcat formation on occasion and with Ziemba's issues with that shoulder, we may see that sooner than later. That's a great point, partner. You know, they've done that in the past on third and short, and we've seen them make the change of moving Ziemba under center. We haven't had that center quarterback shotgun issue over the last couple set of downs. That's worked pretty well it moving has. him underneath Kingston. Play clock inside of five. Play fake. Ziemba. Boy, he knew he was in danger. He ducked out of the way of Colin Bevins, who's going to be credited for that sack. It's a loss of seven. Boy, the pressure by that defensive front has been incredible at times. The Bearcats have been able to set the edge. They've done a nice job of being able to go outside and set the edge on play action passing. Colin Bevins does an excellent job of getting up the field from behind and being able to make the play cast. Weidel did it to the play side and Bevins did it from the backside. Third sack for the Bearcats. They don't even have to blitz to get the kind of pressure they want. That's dropped inside the five. Did they keep it out of the end zone? No. Terrific job on the edge, Clay, with pressure defense from the Bearcats. The NCAA Division II Football Championship, brought to you by Dr. Pepper and College Football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. And Advil, relief doesn't get any better than this. Christmas time in Kansas City. Crown Center Ice Terrace. And Santa Claus is here. Northwest fan. He's the only one not wearing green in the building today. <laughs> there are a lot of Bearcats in the building today, that's for sure. This is a terrific facility, Sporting Park, here in Kansas City, Kansas. It's the home of Sporting KC of the MLS. This is the second year in a row hosting the Division II title game after a long run in Florence, Alabama. Florence was disappointing, disappointed, I should say, to lose it. But uh, what a venue. This is spectacular. Brady Bowles in Northwest Missouri go back to work on offense at the 20. Play action pass. Bowles deep over the middle has Jordan Grove. One man to beat now. Two come over to make the stop. 
Keon Robinson, a touchdown saving tackle at the six yard line. What a terrific touch on the football by the senior quarterback. Jordan Grove had a step, step and a half on Keon Robinson and Bowles just put enough air under it so Grove could run and catch. Just a terrific job by Jordan using his speed initially off the line of scrimmage and a nice touch by Brady Bowles. 74 yards on that play. First down and goal to go. They've attacked the left side. Jackson. And that's going to take everybody on that defensive unit to bring him down. When Northwest Missouri gets in the red zone, it's almost like their playground. They're scoring at 92%. Yeah, it's amazing how many points they can generate. Close to 42 points a game by Brady Bowles and company, and they do it in the red zone efficiently. They've been able to run the football off that left side behind Shane Smith, that left tackle, making his 54th career start for the Bearcats. Grove and Jackson in the backfield. Wow, that's and a heck of an open field Bain tackle. is stopped. What a play by C.J. Davis. He's a good cover corner, but also a terrific tackler. Tackling in space is one of the toughest things to do for a corner. And watch Davis come out. That's just perfect form. What a tackle and a touchdown saving play by the junior. He had a pick six last week against Grand Valley State. And Northwest Missouri. Third down and goal to go. Bowles away from center wants to throw it. Has a man. Touchdown. Shane Williams gets in after the catch. A sophomore from Mount Vernon, Missouri. Terrific call by offensive coordinator Charlie Floor. A little play action, and what makes the play is the suddenness of Brady Bowles. He sees the pressure from the defense. He pulls up, retreats just a little bit, and is able to touch pass to Shane Williams for six points. Jordan Grove. With a big 74-yard reception set up the touchdown. He is an excellent hybrid back. Can run it. He can catch it. And Northwest has a two-touchdown lead here in the second quarter. Brady Bulls with his 30th touchdown pass of the year. And the play that set it up was the connection with Jordan Grove. Jordan Grove does a nice job. He's going to be in the backfield, and he's going to come out and run the seam pass. But I want you to watch 25 in blue, Keon Robinson. His eyes are in the backfield because of the play-action pass, that, and that allows Jordan Grove to run right by him. A terrific pass by Brady Bowles. 74 yards later, the Bearcats are teed up inside the 10-yard line. And then a couple of plays later, Williams finds the end zone on a nice play-action play by Brady Bowles. Brady Bowles, one of eight seniors on the Northwest Missouri State roster. One of the reasons that Adam Doral fully admitted that this season was likely to be a rebuilding year for the Bearcats. When, when he looked at the roster back in July and August, he wasn't so sure that it wouldn't be an 8-3, and 7-4 and four season. For them, that's a rebuilding year. That's a, that's a bit of a down year at Northwest. As it happens, those eight seniors took the lead. Everybody followed. And it's been an outstanding season. Well, I think they get that from their head coach, but they get that from the senior leadership on both sides of the football field. Brady Bowles is one of those guys that have really taken this team under his wing. And they have senior presence as well on the defensive side. Yost up front. 
Patterson up front. In yard in the defensive backfield. So there's enough of that veteran leadership around the football team to bring it together and it hopefully culminates for him in a championship today. Keon Robinson on the return again for the Rams and this time it's a good one across the 30 and finally stood up at the 33 yard line. And the Rams got to get it going. A helmet comes off and it's Robinson's and the officials quick to come in there and separate. ESPN's NCAA championship coverage continues with the FCS championship January 9th. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all NCAA championships. North Dakota State won big last night, 33-7 over Richmond to earn a fifth straight trip to Frisco, Texas. The Bison appear unstoppable again. They'll face either Jacksonville State or Sam Houston State. They're playing today in the other semi. And we saw Jacksonville State just last week, and they can put points on the scoreboard. That's going to be a good matchup today. Well, Jeff Ziemba and the Rams offense have to get something going. Now they're down two scores. Ziemba out of the gun. Again, gets it to Allen Cross. And there is just no room to operate out in the flat as Kevin Berg and Brock Sherman combine on the stop. And do you think that Ernie McCook and Monty Cater are considering maybe making a change at quarterback just to mix it up? Because Connor Jessup was terrific last week. And it, and it looks like this offense may be just a little bit limited because of the injury to Ziemba. So I do, I do believe that they are considering it, yes. Second and ten. Ziemba sets to throw. He got away from the tackle, but he won't get away a second time. Jacob Volstead with his 12th sack of the year. It's a loss of 13. This defense is relentless. And they come after opposing quarterbacks. Initial pressure on the outside by Bevins, but Ziemba gets away from that, only to be swallowed up by the rest of the defense led by Jacob Volstadt. And it doesn't look like to me, Clay, that Jeff Ziemba can protect himself. It doesn't look like he can really move with efficiency and quickness to elude some of that pressure in the pocket. And now Ziemba wants a timeout. The number one defense in the country across the board almost in every category. And they are showing off today. Well, it's the New Year's Six. Two of the greatest days for college football fans. And it all starts at noon Eastern, New Year's Eve day on ESPN. Then at four and eight, the playoff semifinal games between Oklahoma and Clemson and Michigan State and Alabama get underway. On New Year's Day, three more tremendous games to start 2016. All these games on ESPN are streaming live on Watch ESPN. As far as the playoff, who do you like? That's a tough one. I really like Oklahoma. I, I think that they're, they were playing the best football at the end of the season. Going with Alabama, I don't think that the Tide are going to do what they did last year. I think that... You give Nick Saban a month to prepare. And Awful two difficult. Two years in a row, you don't keep him down. Third and 23 after the timeout. Ziemba has time. Has Brown. But he will not pick up the first down. He is stopped at the 34-yard line. A gain of 16, but the punting unit will come out as Bryce Enyard made the open field tackle on the big receiver. Ruan Venter coming on, the true freshman punter. Made a kick for the fifth time already today. Sean Bain Jr. to return, standing at the Northwest 20. And the Bearcats have been close to getting one today. They attack, and they nearly got it. There's a marker down. K. 
Cameron Wilcox nearly blocked that kick. Edwin Lee, we think this is running into the kicker. Kicker. Defense, number seven. Five-yard penalty. Decline. The first down. Boy. That was tough for Wilcox, who nearly blocked this kick. And I believe he was close earlier in the football game, and you're right. There's just a, a running into, so it looks like Northwest is going to get the football around the 21-yard line. Let's go down to Olivia. I'm with Coach Churchma, former Bearcat coach, current athletic director. That's a unique situation. How do you deal that? Oh, it's just awesome. This is uh, such a fantastic venue and such a great championship atmosphere. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I was head coach for 17 years. Now I can see it. The program continue to just get better. A lot of the coaching staff were either GAs or assistants under yourself. What consistency do you see? Well, they, you know, uh, all six of the coaches either coached with me or played for me. Four of them played for me. All six of them coached with me, and uh, they're doing things. Uh, they're doing the things we did, but they're they're taking it to another level, and I'm really proud of them. Very special. Congratulations, coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Mel. Brady Bowles runs on first down. He'll pick up seven yards, and Mel Churchma. Just a, a legend, got to this title game so many times. Winning it three times and still such a big part of that program. A great sounding board for not only the head coach and Adam Durrell, but that entire coaching staff and players. Great resource to have. Hand off to Phil Jackson, looking for that first down, and he's got it. He stopped at the 27. I asked Mel yesterday during the walkthrough, you know, who this current Northwest Missouri State team reminds him of. He said, it reminds me of my first title team back in 1998. How cohesive they are. How talented they are. And they're looking to tie North Dakota State for the most Division II titles all time. Of course, the Bison are now in the FCS. There's Bain with the catch. Sean Bain got loose along the sideline and hauls it in at the 46. That's a gain of 19 on the play. Clay, I am so impressed at the way the ball comes out of Brady Bowles' his right hand. I mean, it explodes out of his hand. And when you have a guy like Sean Bain catching the football, those throw behinds are pretty easy, especially to the short side of the field. Draw play, Wilcox. He's going to be tripped up in the backfield. That's a loss of two as Gupton slices in to make the tackle. That's the best player defensively that the Rams have. And they have him back off of an injury. You mentioned it earlier, the hamstring giving Gupton a little bit of an issue a couple of weeks ago, but he feels like he's fresh now. The Rams led the nation in rush defense the last four years. They rank eighth this season, 91 yards per game on the ground. They've had a little difficulty today stopping the run at times. Wilcox with a burst stopped short of midfield by Gupton. And Gupton is always seemingly around the football. <laughs> when you're a linebacker, you like to run, you like to hit. And that's exactly what 32 does for the Rams defense. Well, they've got Northwest in a third and long situation. Defense has always been a trademark of a Monty Cater team. And this is where Bowles has been able to beat the Rams with his legs. Bowles comes up throwing. And that's going to be a first down catch for George Seal. One of the veteran receivers. His first reception today. Honorable mention all conference this year. Clay, so far, I think the biggest difference between these two offenses, we've mentioned Bain, Williams, Seal, Grove, Jackson. A lot of athletes on the Bearcats at their disposal to spread the football around for Brady Bowles. They'll run it again. And that time it's Jackson. Phil Jackson will pick up six more. Yeah, getting back to that, John, last week, Northwest used nine different receivers in the passing game. They're going to use... 
three running backs, four if you count the fullback Grove. I mean, they get a lot of guys involved. And, of course, Adam Doral, the head coach, calls the play. And it makes it difficult when you have this up-tempo for defenses to catch up. Bowles has all day, and he throws a strike to Seal again. Down to the 18-yard line. They'll move the chains. Right now, Brady Bowles is the best player on the football field. He is the difference maker for the Bearcats offense. His older brother Blake won a national championship with the Bearcats in 09. He's trying to bring another title home to Maryville. Coming up on a minute to go before halftime. Jackson. A run of two yards before he's brought down to the grass. This is the first game of the year for either team on natural grass this season. And a timeout called here by the Bearcats with 57 seconds to go before the half. It has been an impressive start for Northwest Missouri. Last week, they had a battle on their hands against West Georgia on their home field in Maryville. You can see it was a foggy day. Brady Bowles was terrific again. Find Seal, that 64-yard touchdown reception. Put the Bearcats up 31-23, but then West Georgia came back down the field, and Enyard steps in front, takes it back 61 yards for the score. The fans rush the field. And it's off to the title game for the ninth time. Well, it'll be important for Northwest Missouri, as you see, how they got to this point in the season. A lot of offense, 54, 38, and 38 points in consecutive games. And they're looking to score again before halftime to keep that momentum on their sideline. Tenth play. Pumps, throws, incomplete, intended for seal. So now third down. Field goal kicker Simon Matisson has hit a long of 46 this year. They're certainly within his field goal range right now, but this is an offense that likes to step on you. Coming back for the football, there's Bain, and he is going to be Close to the first down. It's going to depend on the spot here. And a timeout called for by Northwest Missouri. The Rams have a lot of respect for Shunt Bain on the outside. Look at the cushion of both of these defenders to the short side of the field on the wide receiving core. Bain's on the inside. He's going to run that little wheel stop route. And he stopped with the throw by Bowles. Really close to the first down. But the respect that... The Rams have defensively as they get closer to the red zone for Sean Bain with four targets, four receptions, and 38 yards on the afternoon. Well, they didn't get the first down. It's going to be fourth in less than a yard, it appears. And they've got a terrific quarterback in Brady Bowles who can run the football so well. We'll see what... Adam Doral decides to do. I think they're, like they're going to bring the, the unit. Field goal, yeah. Yeah. The field goal unit is coming out. So Matisson, who was 23 for 28 this year with a long of 46, was set up for a 30-yard attempt. Jonathan Baker will hold. William Hurtel to snap. And it's 17-0 Northwest Missouri State. Brady Bowles today, 9 of 12, 143 passing. He's also carried three times. You can tell he's been in complete control from the start of this football game. A 74-yarder to Jordan Grove to set up a score. He's done it with his legs. Great play action. 
there for another touchdown to Shane Williams. But he's had nice velocity on the football, and his timing has been impeccable. I think that's the biggest thing. The ball is getting out of his hand in a hurry, and he's been highly efficient. 9 of 12 for 143 in the score. He's one of 11 first-team all-conference selections for the Bearcats this year. He's done that all season long. 61% passing on the season. 29 touchdowns coming into the game. I think so far, John, this game could be boiled down to quarterback play. And without a doubt, Bowles has been terrific. Ziemba coming off that shoulder injury. And that offense for the Rams has struggled. And I don't think it's been to the fault of Jeff Ziemba. He's given it the effort it needs in a championship game. I just don't believe he's healthy enough. No to play and I would expect Monty Cater to, in the locker room at halftime to maybe consider moving to Connor Jessup to, just to see if they can get get that side of the football a spark. First meeting between these two programs and it's been all Northwest Missouri here in the first half. C.J. Davis, his first return opportunity of the day. He is devastating as a return man. Gets to the sideline near midfield. And into Northwest Territory, marked out at the 48. That's a spark just ahead of halftime. A return of 34 yards. Well, Davis does an excellent job of hitting that wall with plenty of speed. He gets to the outside and gets the football to the 48-yard line of the Bearcats, and with one timeout remaining and 30 seconds left, boy, it would be special for the Rams to get on the board before halftime. Davis with six career returns for touchdowns on special teams. Nearly broke one there. Not a lot of time to work with. Ziemba throws it into the hands of the defense. Enyard. Down the sideline, gone, touchdown. Second straight week with a pick six for Bryce Enyard. And it just looked like Ziemba stared at this route the entire time. He was trying to throw the wheel route, but decided to stop Tony Squirewell along the rail. And that's where Bryce Enyard was looking as well. Great anticipation. And he goes the other way for six points to extend the lead to 23. Enyard had a 61-yard return on an interception for a touchdown against West Georgia last week. This one he brings back 59 yards just ahead of halftime. A devastating blow to Shepard, who was already with its back against the wall. Zemba is going to look to the short side of the field. It's going to be a real route, a wheel route, a combination. And you can see Tony Squirewell just settle it down around the 40-yard line. But great anticipation by Enyard. He steps right in front and goes 59 yards untouched. Boy, that's devastating. Just when you think that the Rams offense had a chance to get some points before halftime, the defense of the Bearcats steps up to tack on another six points. You know, Ziemba has had a terrific career at Shepard, the Mountain East Offensive Player of the Year this year, a finalist for the Harlan Hill Award, which is the Division II Heisman. He has been outstanding this year, and Shepard wouldn't be here without him. With that said, they may need to make a change of quarterback. Connor Jessup was terrific last week, and that's not saying he's going to come out and light it up again this week, but... This offense is really struggling right now. Short kick. They're caught at the 25. And there is 20 seconds to go before the half. Well, it looks like the junior is going to come back in to finish the half. Only 20 seconds remaining before halftime. 
That last pass was the one that hurt. You, you open up the, the game with a bad snap in shotgun that leads to six points, and then you finish off the half with a pick six. You said it, they can't lose the turnover battle. They've got two turnovers today that have led to 14 Bearcats points. They play it conservatively. Allen Cross, the run. And Northwest Missouri is going to have a very comfortable lead at halftime. And they will start with the football in the second half. And listen to this crowd. Just an hour and a half away from Maryville. The fans enjoying a 24-0 lead. Now Chris, Danny, and Ricky in the studio. Thank you, Clay. As you said, Danny Cannell, Ricky Williams here in studio with me. Royal Purple Las Vegas Bowl. The Holy War, Utah, and BYU over on ABC. And Tanner Mangum, the freshman quarterback, had a rough go of it here. Here picked off by Tevin Carter. Returns it for a touchdown, 14 to nothing, Utah. And then Ricky Mangum again intercepted. This time, Dominique Hatfield takes it for six. Yeah, that Utah defense has really given him a lot of trouble when he's got the ball out there. Not, not, a, not a smart throw. Hurts the team. You know, they're, they're really doing a good job on defense, BYU is, but the offense has put them in really bad situations. You're right, really bad. You had the two pick sixes, then you had a pick Danny that took the ball all the way to the two-yard line. And then at this point in time, Wilson scores. It was 35 to nothing. He had attempted one pass. This is an absolute beatdown right now. There was so much uh, smack was being talked. You know, bowl week, a lot of people are chirping. And it looks like Utah came out fired up. And you're wondering what's going on BYU. Are they going to respond? But, man, it is ugly right now. It's also a situation where Bronco Mendenhall is coaching BYU in this game, but he's heading to Virginia. We've known that now for a little while. So he's sort of a lame duck coach. How does that affect the team's preparation in your well, mind? Well, I was today? talking to Danny about this, and Danny doesn't think he was doing a lot of coaching, more, more recruiting, getting ready for his, his new job. Think yeah. about it, though. If you're, if he's, he's priority right now, his paycheck is going to be coming from Virginia. It's not coming from BYU anymore. Mm -hmm. So he wants to start thinking about recruiting, about putting his staff together, and it's natural. I'm not criticizing for him. I just think it's a weird situation. If I was a school like BYU, I would say thanks for everything you brought to this university, but go ahead and move on. We'll do our best without you. They it, hired Sataki, the defensive coordinator at Oregon State, earlier on in the day to be their new head coach BYU so maybe a lot of distractions well, between all that I figured coming into the game you know be the players love their coach they're going to go out there and, and play for him and send him off with the with the victory it is not <laughs> going to get going. it's not too late though it's not too late Utah right. hasn't done anything on offense yeah. Yeah. yeah the beehive boot it looks as if it's going to go to Utah that's what they call it but yeah that's the nice. rivalry the, the, all three schools Utah Utah State and BYU play for the beehive boot it's going to belong to the Utes this year, it looks that way. That game's over on ABC. Meanwhile, he's getting a boot, all right. <laughs> and meanwhile, <laughs> over on ESPN, it's the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. This has been a great game, and it's just wrapping up. we got some highlights for you on the way. Bryce Anyard with a big play here for Northwest Missouri State right before the half. Really a backbreaker for Shepard, 24 to nothing. Here's Olivia Harlan with Coach Adam Doral. Coach, you told us this week most of your games have been won by defense. Now I see what you mean. Four sacks sealed by a pick six. What are they doing out there? Playing well. Uh, they're getting a good rush as a unit together. Uh, I think we're mixing up our coverages. And uh, whether we're blitzing or just uh, bringing four, we're getting good pressure right now. We got them off rhythm. Obviously, our crowd's helping immensely. So uh, we got to keep it up. We got 30 more minutes. Offense not to be overlooked. You're up 24 0, and Brady Bowles is having a day. What's he giving you? Yeah, he's doing great. He's playing really good. Uh, I've really challenged the O line and the rest of the offense. I didn't feel like we played great offensively the first half. I feel like our tempo's bad. We're not getting in and out of the sideline quick enough. So uh, we got to do that, and I got to do a better job of getting our playmakers to football. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks, y'all. Gilden New Mexico Bowl right now over on ESPN, Arizona, New Mexico. This has been an awesome game. A new Solomon got off to a great start. And, Ricky, he was finding Caleb Jones early and often. Yeah, I mean, Caleb Jones had 182 yards in the first half. It's just just like playing in the street, give him the deep ball. Yeah. <laughs> just go get it. He was going to get it all right. I think Caleb's showing the NFL scouts, too. He might be a name to keep an eye on here. Lamar Jordan finds Delani Hart Johnson here. And the interesting thing about this play is after Hart Johnson makes the catch, Danny, his brother gives chase. This is his brother behind him trying to catch him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He doesn't want to get that. He's going to have to hear about it for the rest of his life. <laughs> He's going to those brotherly trash talk. Jared Baker, though, was getting it done on the ground, too, for Arizona. They were going up top. They were keeping it on the ground. 42-24, but New Mexico, man, they didn't go away. Austin Apodaca 
Transfer from Washington State. More of a passer, but he scores here, Ricky. Yeah, it's a nice play. Like you come in the game, you're a triple option team. No matter who's in there, they're going to run the triple option. 42-37 right now. Later parts of the game, this game over on ESPN, too. So it's still close. Arizona's driving right now. But this is a game that you got to give credit to New Mexico. There were times when they could have bowed out, but they've stayed in this game. Yeah, Bob Davies has done an exceptional job in New Mexico. It's been a program that was really struggling when he took it over. Now they're playing in a bowl. But it's also interesting to watch Rich Rodriguez. This is a team that was playing in the Fiesta Bowl last year, and they've had an abysmal season by their recent standards. But a new Solomon getting healthy some time to get back. Had some concussion issues. He's mm -hmm. really played well today, but they need to close it out because it's getting really tight right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure Bob Davies told his defense at, at halftime, <laughs> right, right. but, but, but they've come out and, and shut out Arizona in the second yeah, half. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That first drive of the second half for Arizona, they marched right down and scored, but since then, that New Mexico defense has been keeping it close. Coming up next on ESPN, meanwhile, we've got another great bowl game. Ronald Blair and App State, just about two minutes away. The Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. So as soon as that Arizona game finishes up in New Mexico, We'll take you to this one here in Montgomery, Alabama. When we come back, we're going to talk about Will Greer announcing he's going to transfer from Florida. Just the latest in a long line of SEC quarterbacks on the move. We'll talk about this coming up. Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl, North Carolina A&T in Alcord State down in Atlanta. Fourth quarter, down a touchdown, attempting a field goal, and it's a fake DK. Love it. This game had a little bit of everything, and it went down to the wire. This might have been one of the most entertaining games of the day. So we are all tied up there after that fake by Alcorn State. Look at this run by Tariq Cohen there, Ricky. No, the cameraman couldn't even follow him. Right, neither could Alcorn State. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't catch him. That's for sure. School record, 295 yards, three touchdowns for Cohen. Last chance for Alcorn State, Lenoris Footman. It's incomplete, and Alcorn State falls to North Carolina a and C. News from Florida, Will Greer. Already suspended for a calendar year until next October, deciding to transfer. If he goes to another FBS school, he has to sit out the entire 2016 season, but he would be eligible to play for in game one of the 2017 season. Danny, you surprised that he decided to transfer out of the program? I was. I mean, he was just starting to come into his own under Jim McElwain's system. You know, had a big win against Ole Miss, was starting to put up big numbers. And I thought maybe he would wait it out, especially if he hadn't made any announcements yet. But clearly, you know, he sees some big name freshmen coming in. Maybe he's not liking his chances to play. And he's saying, I'm going to try my, you know, try to take my talents elsewhere. And I'm surprised with all the players in the SEC that are transferring, especially quarterbacks, uh, you know, and not in the not too distant past, it was taboo to transfer. Now it's it's the floodgates more of, are, are more a function open. of uh, maybe promises that were made in recruiting. You think that's a big part of it? I, I think it has to be, and I think also, you know, when players now when they're not the starter, they're not getting the chances they thought yeah. they would. They're they're, they're on their way out. That's happening in mass right now in the SEC. You want to find out about who's transferring when and where? Just streaming all of our bowl games are in Capital One Bowl Mania. All you got to do is download the ESPN app. Go to watchespn.com and get it done. All right, class. Today's lesson is on Duke guard Grayson Allen. Make sure you take some notes. Last year, he was the eighth man off the bench. This year, he is Duke's number one option. You want to see some moves? You want to see some dancing with the basketball? Make sure you check out what he does on the court. One of the most dynamic slashers we have in our game. Some people compare him to white chocolate, Jason Williams. Not me, the other one. Write that down. Grayson Allen reminds me of Rex Chapman. They both have the uncanny ability to score the basketball. Class is dismissed. Jay will remind me of Danny Cannell with that vest. There you now you got it right. <laughs> Coach K and Duke taking on Utah. Madison Square Garden. Kyle Kuzma with the bucket here for the Utes. The Utes are a very good team. We go into overtime. Brandon Taylor hits the three, putting Utah up three, and then waiting moments here. Ricky, what's going on? Why you never foul a three-point shooter in the final seconds of a game? Yeah, that's not smart. I think they're trying to give him the game right there. I mean, Luke Kennard hits the three, then hits the free throw. So it's only a two-point game right here, and Duke got the ball back on a turnover, but Brandon Ingram can't make it work. Utah had this thing salted away. Larry Kostoviak wiping the sweat off his brow. They hold on to beat Duke 77-75. Kentucky taking on Ohio State. Coach Cal knows he's got a work in progress with this young team, and another learning experience today. Ja Jaquan Lyle right before the buzzer. Boom! From deep right there. From deep and beats the buzzer. Ohio State up 12 at the break. 
One of the few veterans on this Kentucky team is Alex Poitras. He's going to hit this three-pointer, keeping Kentucky around, but too much Ohio State late. Under two minutes to go, Jay Sean Tate is going to clean up the mess and get the putback. Young players in December, when you've got all these freshmen, it's going to take a little while. Kentucky suffers their second loss of the season. Jordan Grove taking it in here, wide open around the edge. All Northwestern at the half, second half on the way. Welcome back to Kansas City. And the Division II National Championship game presented by Northwestern Mutual. All Bearcats in the first half. Perhaps Northwest Missouri is 30 minutes from the program's fifth national title. They handled Shepard in that first half, and they controlled the game literally from the very first snap. Well, they get a couple of turnovers that really turn the tide and the momentum towards the Bearcats. In the opening set of downs, they get a fumble. Defense sets up the offense. It's 7-0 very early in the game. And then a pick six right before halftime. And it seems like yeah. they're running away with the, this championship in the first half. Yeah, Jeff Ziemba having some trouble with that AC joint into a couple of mistakes. The big play there, Jordan Grove, the 74-yard reception. That set up the second touchdown for Northwest Missouri. Well, they've been explosive offensively. They've done a nice job of taking advantage of their playmakers. And defensively, they've been all over the opposing quarterback in Jeff Ziemba, who's dealing with an AC problem in his throwing shoulder. Only 84 yards passing, four sacks, six tackles for loss, five hurries in the pocket, and then you get the pick six going the other way just before halftime to make the score 24 nothing. Let's take a look at the first half stats. Let's see the rushing yards for Shepard. Big problem. They haven't been able to establish the run. That means that Ziemba has to throw more and he hasn't been affected today because of the shoulder. Only four interceptions all year coming into the game. It's very uncharacteristic for him to throw one. And, of course, it leads to a touchdown. Well, they, the Rams came into this game knowing they had to win the turnover battle. They have not done that so far today, and they knew they had to try to convert on third down to stay on the field today only at 38%. Northwestern will, Northwest will start with the football here in the second half. Sean Bain, Jr. on the return. First team all-conference return, man, and you can see why. Stop just short of the 40, a 39-yard return for Bain. Well, he's the catalyst on the outside, that wide receiver, and they're on special teams. You talk about his credentials. He knows how to make plays with his hands on the football. They said they were going to introduce a new kickoff return for this game. And that might have been it. It might have been it. Going towards the, the short side and then breaking back out to the wide side. So Brady Bowles brings the offense out for the first series of the half. Second year is the team captain. He throws. It's juggled by Clayton Wilson, the fullback. And incomplete. Bowles numbers in the first half. Pretty good. Love the way he operates out of the shotgun. That ball comes out on time and he's very accurate down the field. Second down and 10. Hands off to Phil Jackson. And he'll get a couple. This is the ninth trip to the Division II National Championship game. Second time in three years for Northwest Missouri State. They won it in 2013. Adam Doral told you and I you know, the fan base fully expects to contend for a national title every year. And for me and for my coaching staff, quite honestly, that's stressful. <laughs> but they were able to overcome, you know, some expectations, lack of senior leadership on this team. The good thing is most times they hold up their end of the bargain. Pressure off the edge. Bowles gets rid of it to the sideline. Bain makes the catch. No, incomplete, out of bounds. So a big play is negated as Bain stepped out of the sideline. It was very close on the sidelines. I'm not so, so sure that Sean Bain didn't step out of bounds. Mm. 
with that right foot, but that left foot may have been down before the right hit. Yeah, that's what Adam Doral was arguing. I think that left foot was look in at it bounds again. and had possession possibly before that We're right foot hits out of bounds. The incomplete pass is under further review. Again, it's a crew out of the South Atlantic Conference. Edwin Lee, the lead official. Terry Porter is the replay official from the Big 12. He's looking at this now. Definitely a catch there, and I think that right foot was inbounds before, or the left foot was inbounds before the right foot hits out of bounds. See if you can catch possession there, hmm. and then the foot hits. See, the official was right there looking at it, and I, usually upstairs they're going to defer to his judgment, and it's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was an incompletion because he stepped out. Yeah, the official may have been blocked out of the play by Johnson to determine if he had possession because that ball does move a little bit when Bain was trying to secure it on the on the sideline. I don't think this look gives us the best angle. The, the one from upstairs gives us the best angle as far as his foot. That is probably your best look as whether he controls it or not. Right. So I, I just think that they're probably going to stick with the call on the field. It's just too hard to tell. I know head coach Adam Doral was looking at that as well along that sidelines. He felt like he was trying to lobby for a catch. Very close to being a reception here. That left foot is down. and It looks like he secures the football before the right well, kind of straddles the out of bounds. Well, if the call on the field stands, it's going to be fourth down and seven. So this is a big play early in the half for Shepard. The impressive, the impressive thing about Northwest is they came right out and attacked down the field. After further review, it's been determined we have a completed catch at the 30 yard line. A little surprised by that, John. Normally when it's when it's that close, you're going to stick to what's called on the field, but it it looked like he had possession with that left foot in bounds and a big break for Brady Bowles and the rest of that offense. Terrific concentration by Sean Bain on the edge. Five targets now with five receptions and 65 yards. Congratulations all around. 27 yard reception. First down at 10 from the Shepherd 30. Cameron Wilcox checks into the game in the backfield behind Bowles. You get a play like that, you might want to attack right away on first down. They're going to run it. And Cam Wilcox will pick up four. Miles Humphrey, one of the better defenders on that Rams defensive front, makes the stop. He's the one who tipped that two-point conversion attempt at the line to seal the win last week for Shepard. Boy, this is a big series defensively for that group. They have to keep Northwest from scoring. Bowles off his back foot. Dangerous pass for Wilcox. Lands incomplete. Probably a smart play by Bowles. They were trying to look off and, and set up a screen pass to the wide side of the field. A lot of blue jerseys in that direction. And set up third down at six. Josh Klein's defense trying to come up with a big third down stop here. to Grove in the flat makes the catch and it looks like he's short Jordan Grove who had the touchdown and that big 74 yard reception in the first half is stopped by Johnson and Gupton just short of the first down marker so fourth down there's for Northwest that, Clay there's that speed of Gupton out of the linebacker spot along with Johnson you called it perfectly those guys very tough at the point of attack and hold the Bearcats shy of the first down. So Matisse, who had a 30-yarder in the first half, will come on. Grew up playing soccer in Denmark, so he's very comfortable on a soccer pitch. 
This is a soccer stadium, a 39-yard attempt. No. Big victory for the Shepherd defense. And Monty Cater's team still down big, but it stays a 24-point deficit. Even with the call reversed, Clay, the Rams defense find a way to get off the field. And they'll get it back, and we'll see who comes out at quarterback after this timeout. We expected this might be the case. A new attendance record set here in Kansas City today. 16,181 fans to see this Division II championship game between Northwest Missouri State and Shepard. And it is a partisan crowd. The Bearcats emptying the town of Maryville, Missouri. About <laughs> they have 90 miles from here. Allen Cross will run it here on first down for Shepard. As they're down 24. Let's go down to Olivia. Guys, like you mentioned, the attendance today, but I would like to assume a pretty high percentage of that is Northwest fans. It's a lot of green in the stands, and they have an alumni base in Kansas City of 10,000, and I think a good bit of them would be here today, and coaches have acknowledged that throughout the week. Thanks, Olivia. Mel Churchman said it, you know, I've had ownership in a car dealership back there in Maryville. I shut her down at noon today. <laughs> good decision. And Saturday's a pretty big day for those guys. Ziemba. Boy, it's been a tough day for him. He is thrown down by Jacob Volstead. He has been chased. He has been battered all day. And this goes back to the keys that you touched on, John, at the beginning of the broadcast. Well, you knew that... Shepard offensively had to find a way to stay on the football field. Now they're going to encounter another third and long. They're going into this three for eight for 38 percent. The season average was around 48 percent. So well under the 60 that was projected and then pressured the line of scrimmage. There's been multiple hits on the quarterback tackles for loss doing a great job of pressuring an injured quarterback that really can't make a whole lot of plays once his initial reads break down. That was the fifth time he's been sacked today. Third down and nine, and he's going to go down again. Brock Sherman this time. The senior from Crete, Nebraska. Sack number six for the Cats. That's just good defense, and this linebacking core can really run. I know defensive coordinator Rich Wright harps on the athleticism from the back end, but that front seven led by Volstadt, Bishop, and Sherman on the sack there, they can really run sideline to sideline and get after the quarterback. Should be good field position here for the Bearcats. Venter on to punt again. Bain is going to let it bounce. Tries to field it, muffed it, and it's recovered by Shepard. A huge break for the Rams on a special teams mistake by Northwest Missouri State. DeWan Neal recovers for the Rams. Clay, that's just the break the Rams needed. Now, Bain's waving this off, and at the last second, he decides to field it at 24 to nothing with 10.25 left to go in the third quarter. You do not need to make a spectacular play. If you've already decided to get away from the football, just get away. And Adam Doral has given him an earful there on the sideline as Shepard takes over in Northwest Territory for the fifth time today. Up to now, though, they've been unable to take advantage of good field position. Keeps Jeff Ziemba in the game at quarterback. Junior's had a rough go of it up to now, but let's see if he can get on track. He hits Lolly out of the backfield. Nice play, and that's the first down for Jabri Lolly. 
Pickup of 11, and they'll move the chains. And another big hit after the completion on Jeff Ziemba. He's been effective, Clay, but really on to the short side of the field because I think they know he's limited from throwing from one hash to the wide side of the field. So they've been attacking the short side. It looks exhausted. The biggest thing is, once things break down, he can't use his athleticism in his arm to catch up. First down from the 21, play action rolling to the short side of the field, to the end zone, and he high points it for Brown. Touchdown Rams. Threw it up, and his big 6'4 receiver went up and got it. Huge touchdown for Shepard. Taking advantage of a miscue. They returned serve early in the game. It was the Rams that gave the Bearcats great field position this time on a bad decision by Bain and special teams for Northwest Missouri State. Billy Brown makes him pay. And how about the guts of quarterback Jeff Ziemba? On the run, throwing a dart in the end zone. All-time receiving leader finally gets Shepard on the board. And Ryan Earls bangs the extra point in. And it's 24-7. Ziemba injured, but throws a much-needed touchdown strike. are on the board. Clay Matvick, John Kajemi, Olivia Harlan back here in Kansas City. Jeff Ziemba throwing his 30th touchdown pass of the year to get Shepard on the board as they take advantage of the turnover. The muff punt by Sean Bain. And this team showing great character. We saw the character last week. They were trailing in the fourth quarter, scored 20 fourth quarter points to take out Grand Valley State in their semifinals. And you can't count this team out just yet here in KC today. You don't get to 13 to nothing, 13 victories in a season if you don't have guts. And here is Bain again. Stand on the kickoff return. He'll get across the 15 to about the 16 yard line as we go to Olivia. Clay, you mentioned Jeff Ziemba looking tired, and after that touchdown, he just looked relieved. But when he came to the sideline, he didn't want to celebrate. He didn't want to talk. He was complaining and more frustrated with the bad snap on that play, showing how low it was. And it did look low right in front of my eyes right here. And you know their center is dealing with injuries like we've talked about throughout the game. Just an interesting situation going on for Shepard. The snaps were high early, John, and now they're low. They're still trying to figure that out. This is Cam Wilcox. Beautiful first down run. He'll pick up 13, and Northwest Missouri goes right back to work. They do. They're a machine offensively. I know this defense is number one in a lot of categories, but watching this offense operated by Brady Bowles, they can beat you on the ground, or they can beat you with multiple receivers and multiple options in the passing game. 438 yards per game on average. That's 43rd in the country. Most of the damage is done through the air, but the run game has been pretty effective, too, today for the Bearcats. Bowles throws it out to Bain, and Rams were ready for it as Jalen Johnson is there first for a loss of one. Johnson is the spur linebacker, which is essentially a safety outside linebacker hybrid for Josh Klein's defense. Well, it's Johnson and Gupton, those two linebackers do a terrific job of running to the football and making open field tackles. Boy, if the defense could get off the field quickly here again, get the ball back to the offense. They need to shorten the field for their offense. They really change the momentum here. This is Wilcox again. Not much operating room. We'll pick up three, third down, as Octavius Thomas gets over there. He is not very big, Thomas. We we'll call him OT. He's 5'9", 218, but Man, he plays big. He does. And he's in the middle of that defense. He's tackle to tackle making plays. The junior from Myrtle Beach helping out Johnson and Gupton at that linebacker spot. Bearcats three of seven today on third down. I'm looking to Sean Bain if, if I'm Brady Bowles here on third down.
Bowles has time. Throws. It's caught. Shane Williams. Enough for a first down. A 12-yard reception for Williams. His second catch today. Of course, he had the touchdown in the first half. Boy, a nice route on the outside. He avoids the contact of linebacker Jalen Johnson and just gets right to the marker, about two yards from the marker, and then attacks the football. Experience on the outside by Bowles going to Williams, who ran an excellent route. Bowles throws again. A screenplay out there for Sorrell. Marquise Sorrell, another fast wide receiver from California. They've got so many fast guys and so many weapons. Clay, you said it earlier in the broadcast. Nine different receivers touched the football last week in a victory at home. Today it's going to be around the same number as we head closer to the fourth quarter. After the four-yard pickup, second down. He'll get it to Grove. Jordan Grove, he's going to throw it. Has a man wide open. It's Washington. Dre Washington inside the 10. What can't number 32 do? Earlier in the football game, he had a 74-yard reception. This time, he's going to set back and throw it down the field for 35 to Dre Washington. Terrific job of being able to set his shoulders up and, be, and get the football off under duress. Makes everybody happy, especially the guy that threw it. He always wanted to be a quarterback. Look at him. Sophomore from Adele, Iowa. A touchdown run, a big 74-yard reception. That pass for 35 yards. They're knocking on the door again. Out. North West Missouri State. 30 seconds. Timeout. Doral got the timeout just ahead of the play clock expiring. So after Shepard got that touchdown to get back on track, take away some of the momentum from the Bearcats, the big play from their excellent hybrid back, Jordan Grove, puts them right on the front porch again. New Year's Eve on ESPN. It's the college football playoff semifinals. The games we've been waiting for all year. At 4 Eastern, the Capital One Orange Bowl. Number four, Oklahoma battling number one, Clemson. Michigan State and Alabama, three versus two. It truly is the most wonderful time of the year. It is. Jonathan Jimmy. It is. New Year's Eve. Nick Saban uh, against his protege, Mark Antonio. A lot of fun, ma fun matchups in the bowl season, especially here in the playoff, the semifinals. I, I really like Oklahoma. I don't know why I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm so pro-Oklahoma. Oh, that's a good team. It, very good football team on both sides, and they can score a lot of points. I got to say, though, your record isn't very good when it comes to picking yeah, anything. Man, that's very accurate, Clay. <laughs> Bain went in motion. He'll set up in the slot. The bottom of your screen, but they're going to run it. Jackson. And he'll be stopped at the six. Adam Doral, who calls the plays, named conference coach of the year for the second time in five years, trying to win his second national championship. There you see the instructions coming in from the grease boards. Bowles keeps it. Makes his way toward the goal line, and he is stopped just short of the end zone. Gupton, who else, makes the tackle. It saves the touchdown, but another gutty run by Brady Bowles. Good job with the football in the backfield. Very deceptive. He's able to run right around Jenkins, the defensive end. And Schieber, the tight end, tried to help his quarterback in the end zone here at the end of the play. But you mentioned Gupton there defensively for the Rams. Third down and one. It's Grove looking for the payoff. Got it. Touchdown, but there's a marker on the field. And this is coming back. Oh. 
offense. Number seven, 10 yard penalty. Third down. Just the second penalty against Northwest today, but it's a big one. It takes a touchdown off the board. Well, it takes points off the scoreboard. You're going to get the hold on the outside. Just ahead of the Grove touchdown, just at the point of attack. Those hands get extended, and you can see a whole lot of jersey of Keon Robinson being grabbed by Cameron Wilcox. Bowles gets it to Grove, but he's bumped out at the five. And it'll be fourth down as Keon Robinson was quick to knock him out of bounds. And the field goal unit's going to come on. So a touchdown taken off the board because of the penalty. Now Shepard hoping that Matisson will do what he did last time, miss a field goal attempt. He missed from 39 after a 30-yard make in the first half. This will be a setup from 22 yards away. If Matisson can convert here, Clay, it's exactly what the Bearcats wanted to do, responding with a score. And they do. It's a 20-point game. Simon Matisson, the junior from Denmark, his second three-pointer today. Bearcats lead it here in KC. The NCAA Division II Football Championship. Brought to you by Head & Shoulders, Live Head First, and Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. A very popular power and light district in beautiful Kansas City. Where it's 27-7 Northwest Missouri State. See Johnny's Tavern there? I should be there tonight. Olivia Harlan has been in there a few times. Well, we should get an invite. Yeah, she's a Kansas City That's native, right. So. There is Monty Cater. 29 years to get to this game. And his team got down early. But they've shown some character here, getting a touchdown on their last possession, ready to get it back again. The Mountainese Coach of the Year for the second time in three years. Ernie McCook, the offensive coordinator, was telling me yesterday that uh, the guys, the players, got a Facebook page made for Coach because he's not a social media kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were schooling him up on how to use it. He was really impressed on how many friends he had right away. He's Can a popular imagine. guy. Very much so. Rams would like a big return from Keon Robinson. Good effort to get to the 31. Boy, they have really tried to kick it away from C.J. Davis. Well, you could see the explosiveness Davis has on the return game, and I really like the way Keon Robinson plays, not only on special teams, but he's a thumper out of the secondary for the Rams. Ziemba has played through some pain here today, without a doubt. We've seen him land on that sore right shoulder a couple of times. He's been sacked six times today, so Northwest has kept the heat on him. It's imperative that they get something done offensively on this series again. On first down, wants to throw. In trouble, gets away from pressure, throws it downfield, and just threw it away. The closest receiver was Dalton Boyd. Bring up second down. Rams on first down trying to spread the field with formation and get vertically down the field, but the pressure in the pocket again too much for Ziemba to find an open wide receiver. Almost 3,300 yards passing this year, a Shepard record for Ziemba. He's got 116 and a touchdown so far today. And run it with Allen Cross. Give him three. So third down and long again for the Rams. Well, Clay, we talked about third down being one of the keys for the Rams offensively. They have to find a way to keep this drive alive on third and long here, at least third and seven. And that's going to come down to protecting the pocket, trying to keep the injured quarterback clean here on this third down opportunity. This place gets loud. Over 16,000 fans 
Most of them from Maryville, Missouri in attendance here today. Here comes the pressure on Ziemba, ducking around. The seventh time today Ziemba has been sacked. Bevins and Sherman combined on that one. There are plenty of white jerseys in the backfield, and I'm not so sure that Jeff may have missed a little hot route to the outside with Squirewell. Too many free blitzers there at the point of attack for Ziemba to elude. I think he wanted to get rid of this football quickly to the left, but good coverage down the field made Ziemba hold on to it and take the sack. Sean Bain off the kick earlier. He's going to call for the fair catch. Makes no mistake this time. And the Bearcats will have it at the 32-yard line. Bevins is a great story, John. He's a warrior. If you, you talk to the players and the coaches, they'll tell you this guy's played much of the season with a hip injury, but he decided against a medical red shirt because he wanted to help get the Bearcats to this national championship game. Well, you're right. He plays with pain. He doesn't practice a whole lot. And I remember they... When they approached him in the spring, the coaches were telling us, hey, we're going to kick you outside maybe to defensive end. He kind of had those deer in the headlights looks like. I tried that before as a freshman. It didn't work out all that well. They moved him this year, and he's been so productive. That's yeah, it's working out. Here's a screenplay to Randy Schmidt. And he's got a first down. Adam Coles makes the tackle. Closing minutes of the third quarter. Northwest Missouri State trying to win its fifth Division II national title. Bulls now over 200 yards passing. Jackson. A little opening there and he turns it into a positive run you know Jackson does just enough from the running back spot as he gains six there on second down to complement the passing game he gives you just enough of explosiveness and toughness between the tackles to complement what Bowles does 77 yards today on the ground you didn't if you didn't look at the stats you may not think he had that many well, he's put together a very good day On second down and three, Bowles had it in the hands of the receiver, T.J. Schieber, but he can't haul it in. Schieber had a touchdown catch last week, and he's kicking himself for missing that first down reception. So it'll be third down. Another big down for head coach Adam Doral. to try to stay on the football field, keep that tempo and pressure on this Rams defense. I don't want to give the Rams any opportunities here They're in control we'll keep it that way for four of nine today on third down Bulls to the outside and the Rams were ready Dre Washington is consumed at the 46 yard line that's a loss of three and Octavius Thomas is there again so is Chanel Jenkins Clay can't say enough about Thomas and Gupton and Johnson the linebacking core for the Rams they do a great job of seeking out players with the football in open spaces and bringing them down to the ground. So Randy Schmidt will come on for the third time to punt. C.J. Davis and Keon Robinson back deep. And it is going to be Robinson. He'll get to the 30-yard line, and he's hammered down there. As Brock Sherman makes the tackle. Arkansas State, Louisiana Tech. Tonight, 9 Eastern. The RNL Carriers, New Orleans Bowl. Been down there for that one a time or two, and that's a fun bowl game. It is a Especially a fun spot. after the game. <laughs> yes. over, when everything spills out under the streets of New Orleans. You've been on Bourbon Street. I have. Liter literally. <laughs> <laughs> You are so. 
41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Shepard down 20. Jabri Lolly spins away from a tackle. Gets back to the line of scrimmage and picks up two yards. What an inspired run by Jabri Lolly. A junior from Wilmington, Delaware, refusing to take a loss. That's when you know you're playing in a championship football game. When you get an effort like this. A guy that hasn't had a whole lot of carries, but still has that passion and that fire burning inside, down 20, heading to the fourth quarter. Jeff Ziemba, the gutty performance today for the junior quarterback playing through pain. His team still in this game going to the fourth quarter, even though it hasn't been their day up to now. But they're going to need some magic in the fourth. Ziemba finally getting the Rams on the board in the quarter. That touchdown to Brown. But the Bearcats have had an amazing day. They lead it going to the fourth. Well, congratulations and Merry Christmas to you. You're on TV. 27-7 as we go to the fourth quarter. Clay Matvick, John Congemi, Olivia Harlan here in Kansas City. Shepard has the football, but they're down 20 points. Their offense has really struggled today. Just 102 yards of total offense up to now. Jeff Ziemba. And that sore right shoulder flushed out of the pocket. Looking to the sideline. He's got Billy Brown. And that's a catch. Run out at the 36-yard line. So it'll bring up third down. And about four. Again, that combination hooks up to the short side of the field. Brown with six reception, closing in on 100 yards. But this, the most important down maybe of the football game. Right now, the Rams converting 30% on third down. They have to find a way to stay on the field. And here comes that crowd to get behind the Bearcats. Siemba sacked again. And that's the eighth time. And this defense is absolutely relentless. That time it was Brandon Yost and Tristan Patterson, the two interior linemen, getting to Jeff Siemba. Well, you used the perfect word, relentless. It's been Yost and Blevins and Sherman and Volstad, everybody in the backfield taking turns, taking down Jeff Ziemba. And that time it was Yost. Sixth three and out for the Shepard offense. And they're having to punt for the eighth time. This one's going to bounce and check up at the 45 yard line. Terrific field position one more time for Northwest Missouri State. The defense going to give CM but nightmares tonight. There's Rich Wright, the defensive coordinator, in his fifth year on the job with Northwest. And what a job his unit has done today. They got eight sacks on the Shepard quarterback. They have held the running game of the Rams to negative 29 yards today. They've been dominant on that side of the football. Now the Bearcats get it back. Going to work with good field position again. Wilcox, little or no game. As James King, who forced the fumble in the first half, number 96 makes the tackle there. And you would think, even though there's 13 10 left to go in this football game, the up tempo offense for the Bearcats may start to slow down a little bit. Want to snap. The football with a little less than five seconds, ten seconds on that play clock. That's what they're doing here as it winds inside at ten before the snap. Wilcox again. Bring up third down. Twelve straight Division II playoff appearances. 
for Northwest Missouri State. Longest current streak in the nation, and today they have played like a team that knows what this stage is like. Well, they've complemented each other. I think the defense started the football game with a big turnover. The offense cashed in, and head coach Adam Dorrell, the beneficiary of putting this all together. His great-grandfather, Ross, played for the first team at Northwest Missouri in 1908. It's amazing. Bowles to a wide-open George Seal. First down and more inside the 40. He's down at the 37-yard line, and there are just too many weapons for the Bearcats. Every time you, you look out, it's either Bain or Williams or Seal. Jackson in the backfield. Grove not only catching it but throwing it, but it's one guy orchestrating it all, and that's the senior, Brady Bowles. 13th game this season with over 200 yards. He's had four games over 300 yards, including a 400-yard game back in the regular season. Jackson shedding tackles. Excellent run on first down. Phil Jackson. Said it before, his dad is here, Phil Sr. Also, his brother Justin is in attendance. Justin is going to be playing in the Outback Bowl with Northwestern against Tennessee this year. Clay, you get the feeling with that great field position set up by the defense, this could be one of those championship drives right here. We need a yard to move the chains. Bowles has plenty of time. Going for Jordan Grove. He's got it. Another great catch by Jordan Grove. And what touch by the senior quarterback, Brady Bowles. Well, Clay, he's made every throw. And that's not where he wanted to go with the football. That's about his third option. Pressure in his face. And he just throws it over the coverage of Jalen Johnson, the linebacker. 13-yard play. Back in the red zone are the Bearcats. Got two red zone touchdowns so far today. And Grove again. Hurdles a man. Lowers his head and gets inside the 10. Thomas makes the tackle, but it's a six yard pickup. The Bearcats have really stacked positive plays together today. You get a run of six, you get a pass of 10, you get a, a pass of 20, you come back with a, a positive run of five yards. They've done a nice job complimenting run and pass. And Jordan Grove is such a big part of what they do. They can use him in so many ways. He sets up the second and four after that last play. As we go to 10 minutes to play in this game, Bowles to Bain, who was open, but he dropped it. Should be third down and four. Going back to Jordan Grove, John, what would you call that, that position? They really don't have a name for it. No, he's almost like, you know, that hybrid H-back type of, of wide receiver slash running back. He does everything. We've seen him throw a pass today for a big completion, but he's just a, a terrific football player. And he, he can do multiple things, and that's why he's so valuable to what they do as an offense. Charlie Floor, the offensive coordinator, couldn't say enough about him. He's a sponge. He soaks up everything he gives him. Makes him so dangerous. Oh, slipping a tackle is Wilcox. Great effort to get the first down and get it to the one-yard line. Elijah Norris, the transfer from UConn, was able to keep him out of the end zone. First down and goal to go. Small and powerful is the way he was described by Charlie Ford, the offensive coordinator. Wow, that was a big-time shot by linebacker James Gupton, but not until Wilcox gets inside the one-yard line. Gupton is a headhunter. He sure is. Ninth play of the drive, and they may have to take a timeout here. Play clock is at three. And you're right. Second timeout, Northwest Missouri State. Northwest Missouri State with the timeout. They've got one remaining. But they are right on the doorstep. First down and goal to go with 9.26 to play. And this could be the haymaker. As Shepard has had a tough time on offense today. 
And if they go down another score, it might be lights out. Well, this is that championship drive you're looking for. As you mentioned, that knockout punch. Defense tees up the offense with excellent field position, and it's up to the Rams defensively to try to make a stand. We alluded to it before, John, about Adam Doral's expectations for the season, and they weren't high. He didn't have a lot of veterans coming back, just the eight seniors. But he said at the end of it, looking back, the senior class was key this year, especially Brady Bowles, who led Northwest on a 73-yard game-winning drive against Central Missouri in Week 3. He said that was such a turning point because Bowles had thrown three interceptions up to that point, led him back, got him the win, and it was a great character moment. He it told Adam Doral a lot about Bowles and about the team. And you talk about championship drives, that was certainly it in week three. That's right. Bowles, the handoff. Jackson hit at the line of scrimmage, lunges back toward the goal line, and he stopped short. So it'll be second down and goal. It looked like OT, Octavius Thomas, in the middle of that stop for the Rams defensively. This will be the 10th play of the drive as we go under nine minutes. Wilcox and Grove in the backfield. It'll be Grove. Touchdown, Bearcats! His second touchdown today. Play, they did it with a mix of run and pass. Ten plays, 54 yards, almost taking five minutes off the clock. I don't know what position Jordan Grove plays, but you may call him a champion after today. It doesn't matter. The great Dane Simon Matisson comes on for the extra point. And it's 34-7. Northwest Missouri State. Again off the left side, Shane Smith providing that blocking for Jordan Grove. He pushes and extends this lead to 34 to seven for the Bearcats. The NCAA Division II Football Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official planning partner of the NCAA and in part by Dr. Pepper and college football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. The cars actually go that fast just across the way at the Kansas Speedway. They do. We're here at Sporting KC, the home of the Division II National Championship game for the second straight year, and it's been a great venue. And the Bearcats fans checking the list. And they got one more thing to do, beat the Rams, and. They're eight minutes and 47 seconds away from doing just that. A short kick. Keon Robinson, who's been the return man today, they've kicked away from C.J. Davis, and he's going to be punished. Swarmed under at the 21-yard line. Bowles and Grove. They've been two of the leaders in offense for Northwest. Well, they've been able to be the catalyst on offense, and that combination has done a terrific job. They're going for 74 yards. It's just a, a really easy way of leading the offense. Brady Bowles has been able to throw it and get it to his playmakers. That time Grove on the outside to Washington. He's been able to do it through the air, catching it, throwing it, and then rushing it to get the lead to 34-7. to seven. Look at that. Passing, rushing, receiving. He has been a star for Northwest Missouri, who's been in charge of this game literally from the very first snap, the one that sailed over Ziemba's head and led to a turnover. He's in the pocket now, steps up. He throws it downfield nearly through an interception. Is That was well covered in the secondary by Kevin Berg, first-team All-American. Clay, not only have they been able to sack Ziemba, who came into the game with that AC joint in his throwing shoulder. He had an issue, injured last week, didn't really practice a whole lot, but they've been able to make him hold on to the football. And when that first option isn't there, he's had difficulty moving the offense. You don't want to second guess a 
coach that's in his third decade. But have they stuck with Ziemba too long? Should they have made a change? If they were going to make that change, Clay, I think it would have come at halftime. And it wasn't due to the lack of production by Ziemba, but you're thinking the way Connor played last week, yeah. Jessup played, you might have a healthier option to come out in the second half and, and try to score points in bunches. Shepard calls a timeout. We'll take one, too, with 8.29 to go here in Kansas City. has turned Sporting Park into a party here. This used to be a cornfield. This used to be farmland 20 years ago. They've done a great job developing Kansas City, Kansas. There's Ziemba on the run, throws first down. John Hammer, the fullback. Usually just an extra lineman from that fullback position makes that catch there. A needed first down, a gain of 15 for the Rams. And Clay, that's the first time we've seen Ziemba be able to break contain without being harassed by Bevins or Volstad or Sherman off the linebacking core. The 11th completion for Ziemba today. He's got a touchdown pass. He's also thrown a pick six. He's playing through pain. That right shoulder, which was injured last week, has limited him today. He's been sacked eight times. Allen Cross to the line of scrimmage, no more. As we're under eight minutes to play. The fewest rushing yards for a Division II championship game, minus 12. Western Kentucky, when they played Louisiana Tech in 1973. Shepard, minus 29 today. Now there's still seven and a half to go. That could change, but. The offense has not been able to run the football. They've been limited passing because of the shoulder problems for Ziemba. And they need to move with more efficiency and more quickness offensively to get some of these plays up. He's going to be hit and dumped again. Colin Bevins, number 11, has been everywhere today. It's a loss of six. Sack number nine. It's been 11 on 11. Colin Bevins coming off the edge has been relentless and made life miserable for Jeff Ziemba. It's getting ugly now. And I, it's almost gotten to the yeah. point where when things break down, Jeff Ziemba feels like he can't protect himself. Nicholas Turner, the defensive end, gets in there. And it's turning into a shooting gallery. Yeah, it's, it's probably time to, to put Jeff on the bench. Not that he hasn't given a, a terrific effort for Shepard offensively, but I, I think Monty Cater is going to have to maybe look to Connor Jessup to finish this game out. Sean Payne is going to watch it bounce in front of him. He'll stay away from it this time as it rolls out of bounds. At the 23-yard line. 5.41 to go. So Ziemba sacked for the 10th time. Connor Jessup is getting loose. This was during the timeout. Jeff Ziemba and Coach Monty Cater having a conversation. Well, I think that's the time where you go to your quarterback and you really tell him you appreciate the effort, the championship effort that he gave today. But 
it's come to the point where Jeff just can't protect himself when things break down and it's time to go to Connor Jessup, the backup, and you can see how discouraged Ziemba, the quarterback, is, but he did give a valiant effort. Yes, he did. 34-7, Northwest Missouri State poised to win a championship for the fifth time in program history. Phil Jackson on this carry. Ziemba's headed off to the locker room now. You can see that right arm is just dangling down. The AC sprain in the right shoulder made him a game time decision right up literally as Olivia Harlan reported until seconds before kickoff. They weren't sure what they were going to do. They go with Ziemba. Umani Cater said all week gives us our best chance to win if he's 100 percent. I want him very close to 100 here today. Well from the very first snap it was apparent he was really struggling physically. Ten sacks for negative 72 yards and when you don't have a running game to lean on very difficult for one man especially when he's not 100 percent to carry his share of the, of the load. Here's the national championship trophy. We got some of those in the trophy case in Maryville. That one might be making the trip north here in a matter of minutes. Number five. Brady Bowles. His brother Blake quarterback the 2009 national title team. He has done a brilliant job today leading this offense. Takes that play clock almost all the way down. Another run for Jackson. Bowles will be part of the 2013 championship run, primarily as a running quarterback, and today showing his chops off throwing the football. He's done an excellent job, 20 of 27 for 233, a touchdown. He's also rushed the football when he had to to move the chains for his head coach, Adam Doral. It's quite a family, the Bulls. Younger brother, Brooke, freshman quarterback at rival Central Missouri. He's going to have bragging rights this Christmas. <laughs> That's right. Two-timer. Second down and six. There's Jordan Grove. And hit, hit hard at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Grove with a couple of touchdown runs today, a 74-yard reception, which set up another touchdown. He also had a pass that led to a score. He's done it all for the Bearcats, not only today, but throughout the season. Running the football, blocking on the perimeter, catching it, throwing it today for a big play. Florence, Alabama hosted the Division II title game for 28 years until 2013. The last two have been in Kansas City and Northwest Missouri State, located an hour and a half from here. Brought a ton of fans today, and they have not disappointed that fan base. 2.44 to go. We're at Sporting Park. In Kansas City, Kansas, he's John Congemi. I'm Clay Matvick, Olivia Harlan on the sideline. A beautiful day for football, too, here just ahead of Christmas. Unseasonably warm, and the fans have enjoyed it. Some of them didn't even bring tops. It's not, it's not that warm. They were tailgating early here <laughs> That's in true. Kansas City, Kansas today. The, you could smell the smokers going in the parking lot early. Great atmosphere. And Northwest Missouri jumped out to that early lead after the turnover. And they haven't taken their foot off the gas. Eight of 11 drives have gone into Shepherd territory today. Cameron Wilcox will be stopped. A short loss. Just over two minutes to play. Second down coming up. ESPN's NCAA championship coverage continues with the FCS championship on January 9th. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. North Dakota State in the national championship game in FCS. And they are going to be playing Jacksonville State 
Out of Jacksonville, Alabama, you and I got a chance to see the Gamecocks last week. A very good football team. Don't know if they can beat the Bison, though. That's a juggernaut, but we'll see. It should be I a good know. game. Jacksonville State, State can score a lot of points. What a run for Phil Jackson. As this team feels a celebration just moments away. That's a run of eight yards, a minute 20 to go. Dominant from the very first play of this football game when the defense took advantage of a high shotgun snap. The offense received great field position. They scored on that opening drive and they haven't looked back. Champions of the Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletic Conference for the third year in a row, 27th time overall. A record ninth trip to the national championship game. And we're under a minute to go before they'll hoist the national championship trophy for the fifth time in program history. The post-game trophy ceremony will come your way on ESPN3. Brady Bulls and the Bearcats celebrate. It's become commonplace, but it never gets old in Maryville, Missouri. No, you can tell the players after a long season, they finally find a way to get to win number 15. Second in a national championship. This will be the second championship for Doral. Learned so much from his mentor, Mel Churchma, who's now his boss, his athletic director. He has kept the program's winning tradition going. Timeout, Shepard, with 35 seconds to go. And you can see the celebration has already started on the Bearcat sideline. Head coach Adam Doral, as you mentioned, play second championship, first one in 2013, and now tonight. They've done it on both sides of the football. And there's the, the cold. <laughs> Gatorade splash. You said it was unseasonably warm, but you yeah. never want that on you. No. It's a, it, it, it's a good yeah. cold, though, and they get it. They got the offensive coordinator. That's uh, defensive coordinator Rich Wright, excuse me. Meanwhile, a tough day for Shepard, even though it has been a Record year for that program as well, 13 and one. Their best record in program history, but it's going to end with a loss here in the title game in Kansas City. One more snap. The Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State, champions for the fifth time in Division II. And now a little chippy down there, the officials having to intervene. First two, the 462 yards of total offense. The defense holding Shepard to 97 yards of total offense. And now, finally, the celebration can commence. The Bearcats have done it again. Champions in Division II.
We said it in the first half, John, that this uh, boiled down to quarterback play. Bowles was outstanding. Throws for over 200 yards and a touchdown. Was good in protecting the football. Meanwhile, Jeff Ziemba, a terrific quarterback, but playing hurt. He was limited. He threw a pick six, and it came just ahead of halftime when at least Shepard was still in the football game. Really came down to the two quarterbacks today. It, it really did, and Brady Bowles played exceptional. He, he was a leader out there, and he did such a great job of getting his playmakers involved. I, I think that was probably, a, you know, if, if I had to pick two things, you mentioned the quarterbacks, you talk about the defense and the sacks, but I think there was just more weapons on that side of the football for the Bearcats at their disposal, and it was it was too much from the onset. Olivia's downstairs with Brady Bowles. Brady, this is your second time now winning the national championship. The last time you were kind of a situational quarterback. What felt different being the guy to do it today? Oh, it was just awesome today. You know, this team all year has just been incredible. We've, we've overcame so much adversity. And, you know, to be counted out at the beginning of the year and to be here and to win the game, man, is, is incredible. I was going to ask that. You're 15-0 and you just won by a big margin. What adversity has this team faced to, to those who think you didn't? Uh, just, you know, it was early on. You know, we had a chip on our shoulder and, you know, our coach told us at the beginning of the year, we're a 7-4 and four team and we wanted to come out and prove them wrong and uh, we used it as our rally cry all year and uh, it worked out for us all the way to the end. Brady, you have a stable of at least nine receivers almost every game and not one of them is a senior. What adversity was that for you? Uh, you know, it was tough. Uh, early on in the year, we had to kind of get on the same page, but they did a great job of listening to me, listening to the coaches, and the coaches did a great job putting us in positions to make plays, and uh, we were able to get out and get it done. I understand you missed your own graduation on Friday. Are you regretting that now that you have that hat on your head? Absolutely not at all. Not at all. No, not at all. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Brady Bulls and the five-time national champion. Northwest Missouri State Bearcats. They are now tied with North Dakota State for the most in the playoff era in Division II. For John and Olivia, I play Mavic. Log on to ESPN3.com for the trophy ceremony. Coming up next, Sports Center. Dominating from start to finish. Northwest Missouri State will take the trophy home. It'll be a short trip, just an hour and a half away to Maryville. Champs for the fifth time, 34 to 7, the final. So long from Kansas City, Kansas, where the Bearcats hoist the trophy one more time.